Uh, my name is Inger Skaffle. I'm a doctoral research fellow at uh, Østfold University College. And I'm also enrolled at the PhD program at the University of Oslo at the Faculty of Medicine. And I'm going to talk about online attitudes and information seeking behavior on autism and Asperger syndrome. Uh, so the research team um, that I'm going to present, uh, uh, they're all affiliated to Østfold University College. So the first uh, person I'm going to present is Anders Nordal Hansen. He's a professor at Østfold University College and Elia Gabaron, who's an associate professor at Østfold University College. And she also works at the Norwegian Center for eHealth Research. And Anders Dekschling, who is a doctoral research fellow at Østfold University College and also at Oslo Met. So we worked together at a, on a study um, that was um, later published as an article in the journal International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. And I screenshot the first page. You can see on the right uh, page of this uh, slide. And you can see the, the um, reference at the bottom if you're interested in reading more. So this is the article that presents that uh, is this this presentation is based on this article. Okay, so the background. Um, currently, there are five billion internet users worldwide, and the number seems to increase by the month. And we were interested in Greta Thunberg. That is uh, one of the focal uh, uh, issues in this study. She rose to fame in the year 2019. Uh, in September in that year, she spoke at the United Nations Climate Action Summit, where she gave a very famous speech where she said, like, how dare you? And it became very, uh, yeah, very famous. And she was named Person of the Year by Ti Time magazine in December that year. And you can see the picture um, on the right uh, hand side of her on the front page of Time Magazine. And she has been open about being diagnosed with Asperger syndrome. And Asperger syndrome is a diagnosis that is now under the umbrella diagnosis, autism spectrum disorder, also known to, known to be called ASD. And Asperger syndrome is characterized by difficulties with social interactions and a restricted repertoire of interests and activities. However, there is no general delay in language or cognitive development. So it's an interesting mix that she was a very famous person that year, a political activist, also being open with her uh, uh, autism diagnosis, Asperger syndrome. So she wrote, uh, tweeted on Twitter, you can see I screenshot also her tweet. She posted in 2019, and I can read it. When haters go after your looks and differences, it means they have nowhere left to go. And then you know you're winning. I have Asperger's, and that means I, I'm sometimes a bit different from the norm. And given the right circumstances, being different is a superpower. And she is, says has, hashtag Aspie power. Um, yes. So she actually says that Asperger's syndrome is a superpower. Okay. Um, so... The aim of our study, we had two objectives. The first was to examine and compare sentiment and attitudes in viral tweets mentioning autism and in viral tweets specifically mentioning Asperger syndrome or Greta Thunberg in 2019. And we also wanted to investigate internet users' information seeking behavior regarding autism, Asperger syndrome and Greta Thunberg in 2019. And the method we use to get to for data extraction is that we gather Twitter data, and then we used viral tweets on autism that were published every month in 2019. And with viral, we mean more than 100 likes. That included the words autism or autistic or Aspie or Asperger or ASD. And we also used Google Trends data and we used Google Trends to gather the volume of search queries carried out in Google search during 2019. 
<clears throat> about autism, Asperger syndrome, autism spectrum disorder, and Greta Thunberg. So we use two sets of tools to analyze these data. We use something called sentiment analysis, which is uh, we used a, a software named AFIN, where you can have like a short amount of text and uh, sort of uh, paste it into this software tool. And it will analyze the text to be either very positive, negative, or neutral. So it's very uh, useful for tweets, for example, which, which are short. But we also used a, a qualitative approach to look further, more deep into some of these tweets. And then we used content analysis, where we search for patterns, but you also look at the frequency. So these are the results of the sentiment analysis. There are quite a there are some numbers there that I'll explain. So if you look at the top here, where I where you can read AFIN lexicon scores, I talked about uh, negative, neutral, or positive uh, sentiment of a text. So minus five means very negative, zero neutral, plus five, very positive. So if you look at the table, um, the first uh, uh, row. That I highlighted, we gathered 1,074 viral tweets. That's the total sample. And the AFIN value was neutral. So neither very positive or negative. And if you look at the next yellow number that I highlighted, these are the tweets that specifically mentioned Asperger's syndrome, which is all, only like 5% of the total sample but it's significant, significantly more negative than the total sample. And also the tweets that specifically mentions Greta Thunberg is uh, more negative than the total sample of tweets. And we wanted to investigate more about this, uh, these attitudes and the sentiment and then we chose to look further into those tweets that specifically mentioned Asperger syndrome first, and we used content analysis. So these were 49 tweets out of the total 1,074. Um, and these are the themes or patterns that we concluded. And as you can see, even though the sentiment analysis uh, showed a more negative uh, sentiment, a lot of uh, the tweets were also positive and they defended, um, for example, Greta Thunberg from Donald Trump, the sitting president at the time, who uh, quite notoriously tweeted about her in a very, not very nice way. And also general defense of her. And also a lot of tweets mentioned that Thunberg is a role model. And I also have to clarify first that these are the tweets that mentioned Asperger, but over 80% of these tweets were actually about Greta Thunberg. <laughs> and you can see that some of the blue bubble means that it's kind of the neutral, it's just informative content about her. But there were also tweets that attacked uh, Greta Thunberg. Um, and these are in red. And they were also negative in the sense that they defended her but in a very condescending way, for example, saying that she uh, don't bully her, she's just uh, mentally ill or she's a sick little child or something like that. So, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to say, mention one more time, even though these were the tweets about Asperger syndrome, almost all of them were about Asperger and Greta Thunberg in the same tweet. And the next one were the tweets that specifically mentioned Greta Thunberg. And it has sort of the same pattern. Uh, there's a lot of positivity in the way that she's viewed as a role model. Um, there's a lot of uh, tweets that defend her also uh, against Trump, but just general defense, like stop being mean or uh, she's a great person. Why are people attacking her? Tweets like that. But also the same sort of attacks that, okay, don't listen to her. She's unstable. You can't take her seriously. Mm, 
it's also interesting to look at the average uh, numbers of likes, shares, and comments. And also in the first uh, top row, uh, you can see the average number of likes, shares, and comments of the total sample of tweets, which were 1,074. And you can see on average, they got these tweets got 9,577 likes, a lot fewer comments, which is, uh, we know that from before that it's easier to push the like button than to comment. It requires more of people. So that's not, as like a general pattern. So on average, these tweets got 239 uh, comments. But if you look at the yellow numbers I highlighted on the bottom, uh, the tweets that specifically mentioned Greta Thunberg got on average 6,542 likes, which is uh, uh, much fewer than the total sample, which were more about autism in general. But she got, uh, th these tweets got more on average comments. So it stirred more activity in that sense, which is interesting. And then uh, I want to talk about the results from the Google Trends data. Uh, so these the if you look at the horizontal line you can see that it starts from january 2019 and ends in december 2019 so this is a search pattern for autism and it, it has a clear spike somewhere in march and this is the search pattern for autism spectrum disorder and you can see it also has a spike uh, pretty similar in march um which is uh which also previous research show that uh, this is a very natural uh, cause because in march you have the autism awareness day which is exactly to create and stir again engagement and interest in autism so we know from before that the interest in autism increases during that time and this is the search pattern in 2019 for greta thunberg you can see i have a very clear spike there in September somewhere, and also a little spike in December. And this is the search pattern for Asperger syndrome. And it also has that sort of spike in September, especially, which is very similar to the Thunberg spike. And it doesn't, which is also interesting that the Asperger syndrome does not have a very similar pattern to autism or autism spectrum disorder, even though it's under the same umbrella diagnosis, but it's more that the Thunberg and Asperger syndrome has a more similar pattern. Yes, so what we saw from um, our examine of tweets and Google uh, Trends data was that we found a very close association between Greta Thunberg and Asperger syndrome, syndrome in 2019. And tweets that specifically mentioned Asperger's syndrome out of the total uh, sample of viral tweets, over 80% of them also mentioned Greta Thunberg. And we also saw a strong association between internet searches on Asperger's syndrome and Greta Thunberg in Google uh, uh, Trends data, which I just show you. Uh, and we discussed that this can show the potential of a famous person being open about a health condition, that it really st stirs interest in the condition, which also makes like a lot of potential for uh, uh, public health uh, information, of course. But we also uh, saw that Greta Thunberg was a controversial role model. She was seen as an empowering figure, um, but also other tweets called her a child, unstable, autistic in a negative manner, or mentally ill, and not to be taken seriously. And the fact that she was open about her diagnosis was used against her sometimes. And the viral tweets that attacked her stirred the most engagements, again, engagement, as these tweets received on average more likes, comments, and shares. And this can also... Uh, um, show us the cost of being a key figure in a controversial debate, um, such as the climate debate, which is a very polarized debate with a very harsh social media climate. 
it might scare other politically engaged persons to be open about personal conditions also. And perhaps young people also see that she's bullied even by the then sitting president. Yes, but there are some limitations to our study. Um, and we also have some suggestions for future research. We only analyzed viral tweets. And of course, there are other tweets that would have been very interesting to have uh, a further look into, but we set a bar for our study. And we also didn't look or investigate if these uh, tweets were uh, came from bots, which are automatic automated accounts. We know that that can be used in political debates, especially. And we also only looked at English tweets only. And we know that, for example, Twitter is also very popular in Japan. And there, are, yeah, we exclude people only looking in the English language, of course. And there's also something called the silent majority of Twitter users. There are many Twitter users who never tweet or like or comment, and but they're still there and they follow the discourse and uh, are active in, their, in that way. They're not included. And the software we used for the sentiment analysis, the AFIN, is not able to detect irony or sarc sarcasm, which we also kind of noticed when we first saw the results from the sentiment analysis and then looked at the content analysis, that some of this negativity were actually positive because it was a defense of her, or maybe the wording was uh, looked at as more negative from the sentiment analysis tool. And uh, also Google Trends should not be considered as pulling data, but more as one data point among others before making any conclusions. So it's not like a survey. Okay, so just to sum up and um, uh, conclude, uh, Thunberg definitely raised attention to an interest in Asperger's syndrome. Uh, when inspecting Google Trends data, we found that during 2019, Asperger's syndrome was closely associated with her, and we also found this association in the content analysis. And Greta Thunberg was regarded as a role model in many ways. However, she was also subject to cyberbullying by people who either wanted to discredit her or had a stereotypically negative view of people with an autism diagnosis. So these are the references that I used in this presentation. And yes, feel free to contact me if you have further questions. And thank you for inviting me to this seminar.